Good morning, friends, and welcome to Thursday, October 22nd. Thanks to Esther Knopfsinger for getting us started. from the Upper Room Discipline by Marilyn McIntyre. And our scripture this morning is Psalm 90, 1 to 6 and 13 to 17. A prayer of Moses, the man of God. O Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you would form the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting, you our God. You turn us back to dust and say, turn back, you mortals, for a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday, when it is past, or like a watch in the night. You sweep them away, and they are like a dream, like grass that is renewed in the morning. In the morning it flourishes and is renewed, and in the evening it fades and withers. Turn, O Lord, how long? Have compassion on your servants. Satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love so that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Make us glad as many days as you have afflicted us and as many years as we have ever seen evil. Let your works be manifest in your, to your servants and your glorious power to their children. Let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us and prosper for us the work of our hands. Oh, prosper the work of our hands. Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The history most of us learn in school takes us from war to war, from conqueror to king, and shows us how governments and empires rise and fall. It's an important narrative, but it is generally told from the point of view of the privileged victors. To trace the hand of God in history is to understand that the events in the past in very different terms. It is to consider the great mystery of creation and forgiveness, intervention, and loving provision that continues in all that grow and die, mutate and merge, blossom and erupt, to recognize the source of all human achievement without whom there would be nothing. When the psalmist says, may your deeds be shown to your servants, your splendor to their children, Perhaps the psalmist is asking God to open our eyes to see more truly those things that we think we know. It takes trained and prayerful awareness to recognize the threat of grace and failure and suffering and tedium. Quakers learn to ask, what is of God in any event that they encounter? A pastor I know asks himself in any new situation what God may be up to. The author's spiritual director has taught her to watch expectantly each day for what comes from God, for learning and for healing. And though the author still frets about her frustrations, she has found that when she watches for God and remembers that God is more present than we think, she more often recognizes God's surprising deeds for what they are. And as we learn to practice the presence of God in this way, it may be that our children will grow more readily aware of the splendor that lovingly abounds in the light and the darkness that enfolds us. 
Let us pray. O Creator God, help us to recognize the wisdom of your deeds and the splendor of your divine imagination in nature, in human stories, and even in the hardest of times. Amen. And now we will close with Great is Thy Faithfulness, verse 2. open. Watch out. God is all around you. I hope you see him today. Amen. <laughs>